I once watched a rabbi take five minutes to set himself up before starting. So you only have to wait 30 seconds. You should be very grateful. <laughs> so guess what happens on the Jewish calendar this week? <laughs> it's Rosh Chodesh Elul. What is Rosh Chodesh Elul? It is the head of the month of Elul. So what? So what's so exciting about Elul? It's the month before the high holidays. Mm -hmm. It's like the Jewish month of soul searching. I thought that was going to get a laugh. Our tradition teaches... <laughs> Our tradition teaches that on the day of Rosh Hashanah, as we celebrate the start of another Jewish year, we each take a walk, single file, past God. And God, the monarch, opens the book of judgment and reviews everything we did over the course of the last year. The good choices, the bad choices, everything in between. We're taught that the truly virtuous few God marks them down immediately in the good pile. And we're taught that the truly wicked few are marked down in the not-so-good book. And then it's 99% the rest of us, all of us, who spend the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur making teshuva, resetting ourselves uh, to hit true north again, right? Because we're human and we all sort of veer from the mark over the course of the year. So, we have 10 days of soul searching to make amends and find it in ourselves to seek forgiveness and to grant forgiveness and to commit ourselves to being um, even better uh, in the year to come. <clears throat> so, what if you happen to be at services last week? A number of you were. Do you recall at all what we spoke about? <laughs> yes, this is a test. Great, that's what I thought. Oh, oh, Cohen, my best student. Go ahead. What did we talk about? We talked about being grateful after meals. We did. We did talk about that. And of course, we forgot about it immediately. Indeed. Indeed. So what we did, from my point of view, is we started to learn about Musar, which is, right, right, is ringing a bell? Okay, so we started to, uh, to learn about Musar which is Judaism's ethical guideline. So you might not have known that uh, Judaism has a self-help section. Musar is it. Okay, a little chuckle. Thank you, Susan and Gail. Gosh, you guys are rough. Okay, so last week we spoke about three um, values that are three traits that are really, really important to cultivate. We started with gratitude, because it's really hard to do anything if you're not grateful. So we started with gratitude. We started with patience, mm -hmm. and then we started with, oh no, we started with humility, patience, and gratitude. That was the order. Humility, patience, and gratitude. And I said, my prayer for you this week is that you spend the week practicing humility, gratitude, and patience. So, you might not have known, but this, I had an ulterior motive. Did you know that there are just five more weeks left until the day before Slichot? that we're having at your house. Thank you very much, Davira and Bernie. So guess how many traits there are that we've got to get through before then? <laughs> well, it's six times, so I broke them up into three. So it's six times three, so it's 18, right? So we got six weeks. So I am gonna share with you the next three steps in Musar because we can use this month of Elul to start practicing for all that, you know, brow beating and the heart beating that we're going to do during the high holidays. We can like, you know, get a start on things. We can get a jump on things. So we're going to talk today about the qualities of compassion and order and equanimity. So compassion, heavy, right? Yeah, that's right, Helen. Compassion, order, and equanimity. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a quote from the Mishnah Torah, um, which was written as cliff notes uh, for the Talmud by Maimonides, or the Rambam. 
So he figured it was really, really hard to get all the rules out of the Talmud. So he decided to write a Cliff Notes version, and that is called the Mishnah Torah. So Rambam says, one of the greatest Jewish minds of the Middle Ages says, Behold, I have set before you today the blessing and the curse. That sounds familiar. Did someone just read that out of the Torah? Yes, it was me. Okay, implying, says Maimonides, that the choice is in your hand. That, or your hands. Any one of the deeds of humanity which a person desires to do, they may, whether good or evil. Therefore, Deuteronomy earlier on states, if only their hearts would always remain this way. From this we can infer that the creator does not compel or decree that people should do either good or bad. Rather, everything is left to their own choice. Okay, so we got high holidays, we got character development, we've got free choice. I'm gonna throw one more coal on the fire from Devarim Rabbah, so this is Midrash. The sages say, the Holy One, blessed be he, said, I did not give them blessings and curses for their harm, but to inform them which good path they should choose so they earn a reward. From where do we derive this? From what we read about Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Despite some of the metaphors of judgment that we have in both the Torah portion and in our conception of what is happening on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we also know that the rabbis teach us that God gives us a choice and the reason that God gives us rules is to help us live well, obviously. So what are these rules according to Musar? Well, we've got to have compassion. That's a pretty obvious one, right? Yeah. Right, and you think you know what compassion means, right, Susan? What does compassion mean? Caring. Caring, mm-hmm, yeah. But our rabbis teach us not only caring, but acting on it. And how do we get into practicing compassion? Um, it comes from the word uh, rachamim, which is from the same root word as uh, rechem, which means womb. So we're being taught that there's a closeness in compassion. When we feel separate from other people, we lose compassion for them. Um, there can be fear, there can be hate. But if we can get into a sense where we can get close enough to someone, like a parent would get to a child, then we can imagine ourselves more as one thing and less separate. So in Musar we learn that compassion comes from closeness. Okay, so the next one is order, which also comes from the word din, which means judgment, which is also what we're reading about. So how can we pair compassion with judgment? It turns out that God, in the very beginning of everything, thought that it would be a really good idea to create a world based only on judgment. Then God decided that he didn't want to be that organized and that he should throw in compassion. Because if there's compassion in the world, then human beings have, yes, free choice. So we have to balance the compassion on the one hand with the order on the other hand. So why order? Better than chaos, is it though? So in terms of order, Musar teaches us that one way that we can think about it, if we're not orderly like Cheryl Stetcher, <laughs> I am guilty, is that we can think about it in terms of honor and we can think about it in terms of humility. So check back to your notes on last week about humility, which is taking up exactly the amount of space that you need to take up in the world. So we're gonna balance order, we're gonna balance compassion, and we're gonna have equanimity. What is equanimity? Evenness. If you are not like Brian Stetcher, who is the paragon of equanimity, you might want to learn that I'm sure even the paragon of equanimity has to ride the storms of the wave, right? So equanimity is not actually being calm. 
I'm not sure if you're actually calm all the time or if you're just riding the waves. We'll have to discuss this, you know? <laughs> but equanimity is not just being calm. The Judaism doesn't actually um, highlight uh, or, 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 va or value just being chill, right? In, in Judaism, we believe that if there's not a struggle, then there's not growth. So in terms of equanimity, in terms of Musar's teaching, um, it's just talking about riding the wave, going up, going down, and just not being as reactive to the waves as we might be. So those are the three things that I wanted to bring you today uh, that we can use over the next week or weeks to think about what we are good at and what we are not so great at, what our curriculum is going to be as we look into ourselves and look out of ourselves to see what we want next year to be about. So I will say from the Bima, order is high on my list. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.